When it comes to learning a foreign language, it can sometimes be a bit difficult to know which exact vocabulary is going to be important for you to learn, especially if you're learning your first foreign language. You'll see countless videos and articles about language learning talking about when you first start to learn the first 1,000 words or the first 5,000 words or the top so many words, etc. Learn the top 100 verbs. But after that, for example, like where do you go? Like how do you find vocabulary to learn? How do you know which vocabulary is going to be important for you to learn? And how do you know which vocabulary is going to be ones that are just going to not be that useful for you? Because everyone's different, you kind of need to do your own research and your own work. But in this video, hopefully I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do in order to help you kind of find your way in the topics and subjects that you're interested in and also in the areas that you would like to genuinely learn. So first of all, I'd like to start off by saying that in English, which is my mother tongue, I never really understood politics for the longest time. Actually, until last year, I started to actually learn about different phrases and wording within politics, even though I knew of the word itself, I didn't know the meaning of the words. Uh, red state, blue state, for example, which is more of like an American term or you got the liberals or the democrats, left wing, right wing, etc. I never really knew what any of this meant and it was only like last year or maybe a little bit before that when I was a little bit more interested in learning about politics that I decided to actually look up what these terms actually mean. And I'm not that great at politics now, but it's a good example for me personally and hopefully for you guys as well to show that you could understand these words and you can hear them and kind of understand that they fit within the term of politics but you may not know what each individual word or phrase mean until you actually take the time to actually look in and see what these words mean because sometimes they could be quite a lengthy and descriptive word to look into it may not be a simple description essentially for me like i was never going to learn and understand any of these terms until i was actually genuinely interested in politics and it's why i took like 26 or 27 years of my life without even worrying about learning about politics at all really i never really understood uh, left wing or right wing but I just knew they were political terms and it was one end of the spectrum to the other end I just didn't know which end believed in which ideology and because of that I was just never interested in learning them and like I say a couple of years ago I just decided to look more into it as politics when you grow up just becomes more of a interest for most people let's say um, and because of that I've actually learned somewhat what these words mean not all that much but as much as I can be bothered to learn about politics and that vocabulary. So even in your mother tongue, there are gonna be sets of vocabulary that you may not understand fully or at all, but you may recognize the vocabulary. Even in your mother tongue, you're not gonna know every single set of uh, topics to talk about. I couldn't talk about makeup, for example. I really couldn't get far with talking about astrophysics, um, you know, and there's other topics as well, I'm sure that I could pick out. And actually there's probably gonna be more topics I couldn't speak about than topics that I could speak about. So you've got to understand this, that like when you learn a language, there are essentially just a bunch of words that are within these broader topics, let's say. And you, you need to think to yourself, like which topics do I want to talk about and which ones are going to be interesting for me to learn about. And this may change depending on your goals for that particular language. For me learning Polish, I would like to get to a decent level to where I can just speak with people without really having an issue with them understanding me. And I don't really want to interfere too much in regards to them like not understanding me and having to rely on Google Translate and whatever. So I want to get to like that kind of level. That's like kind of my goal at the moment, although that's quite a long-term goal, I would say. But even though that's my goal, I would still like to travel to Poland, for example, and visit smaller villages where I can speak to uh, you know, typically elder people within these villages to ask him about daily life, what's it like living in this village, is it quiet, is it dangerous, you know, all these other things. I would like to try uh, local restaurants and po like traditional Polish food within these smaller settlements in places which are not typically touristy places. This is just something that personally really interests me, especially with Poland, because I'm quite interested in the language at the moment. And it's just like a big interest for me to be able to do this one day. And because of that, I'm going to want to learn phrases which are going to be around speaking with people from the villages and maybe speaking about things that I wouldn't normally speak about, which may then talk about things such as agriculture because they're in smaller villages and as such, agriculture is just a bigger thing within smaller settlements in, in the countryside, for example. So it really depends if I was planning on just visiting big cities in Poland, then I wouldn't necessarily want to learn about agriculture so much, but I would want to learn more about potentially 
uh, you know, life in the big city, you know, probably more to do with, uh, you know, the construction of the buildings or, you know, just the history of the place, whatever. There's going to be slightly different vocabulary uh, in the two situations. So the point I'm trying to get at right here is try and think to yourself from learning this language, what is my goal? What is it I want to achieve? And what is it I'm going to be talking about? To whom I'm going to be talking about? And there's going to be essentially all these questions that you want to ask yourself then I would recommend to just do some planning. You know how like in school, when you do your, in my case, English exam, but obviously if you live in a different country, it could have been a different language exam. But the exam of your mother tongue, when I was in school here in the UK, I would do obviously English language exams. And so before you do anything in your English language exams, before you write a big massive essay, it is always really highly suggested that you do your planning and that planning was proved to help basically any student like raise their grade by a few marks and that's essentially what we're going to do right now or what I advise you to do with your language learning is to try and plan a little bit even if it's just some notes that you've thrown on a bit of paper or in my case where I'm going to just throw down some ideas on a notepad page on a computer you could put the name of the language and then you could put just some ideas or some topics that you're going to want to talk about some things that you're just interested about the th the big theme here is interests and wanting to speak about things that you're genuinely interested about so it this is going to be different for everyone so obviously if you're doing this yourself you want to try and you know adapt it to your own likes and interests but for me personally language learning and then we're going to go technology and then we're going to go to what traveling and then you can continue putting down these kind of like big topics and then for example you can go under each one and you can put down like traveling for example um airplane and you can put down like car and you can put down the verb to travel and you can just put down words that are going to be specific for this topic technology we can put down computer in language learning we could put down things such as I have been learning uh, this language for so many years months days weeks whatever in traveling we could put uh, I have traveled to um, I don't know, let's say 10 cities in Poland. You can also maybe put down things such as uh, who taught you Polish? Because when you're speaking with someone, and I think for most people, the idea is that they want to speak with people in a different language. When you're speaking and you ask a question, you're going to want to also be able to understand the response. And so that's also something else that goes into it. You're going to want to not only learn how to speak, but you want to learn how to listen to the response and understand the response to then respond to that. So something that someone easily could ask you, and I think it's quite a popular thing that people will ask you, is either who taught you this language, in my case Polish, or why did you learn Polish? For example, like another really big question. So again, you can put this down. Essentially, you can just like fill out all of these and obviously you can put in more than just three topics of interest they're just three that come into my head right now for example at certain points of my life i'm interested in certain things which then i'm not as interested in moving forward i have juggling balls at the moment which i've just been messing around with and i occasionally in videos you might see me just doing that just with one hand i can't do three ball juggling yet and i've kind of not been doing much practice with that but I've been interested in it and so I learned vocabulary around that or I try my best to learn vocabulary around that when uh, when I'm learning something like that in Spanish and Polish. Um, but like I say, juggling hasn't really been that like important for me. It's just been a fun little thing to do. Uh, with Rubik's Cubes, I've been solving Rubik's Cubes now for um, like a couple years, I would say. I learned to solve one uh, a few years ago and yeah, like ever since I've just been into Rubik's Cubes and so now I've got a whole bunch of them, uh, including this funky little thing, um, if I can even spin it. It's a bit dodgy to spin. There you go. So you can see like it's all cogs and it just spins really interestingly. And so I learned vocabulary around Rubik's Cubes. Uh, quiero resolver el cubo de Rubik's, for example. Uh, it's just a simple one. I want to solve a Rubik's Cube. And uh, 
yeah, like you just learn vocabulary around things that you're interested in and hopefully you just build up knowledge over time. Here are just three examples with traveling, technology, language learning, that you could put down literally anything, whether it's simple vocabulary words that are gonna be specific to this language or phrases. And you really just wanna think about what it is that you're gonna speak about and what it is that may be important questions to ask. With a language like Polish, I'm gonna be way more likely to speak about World War II than I am in a language such as Spanish, where maybe the country just wasn't as affected by World War II as Poland was, for example where Poland has a lot of uh, things you can visit in the country itself to do with World War II, whereas Spain, to my knowledge, doesn't have really anything to do with World War II. And so between the two languages, I'm a lot more likely to speak about World War II in Polish than I am to speak about it in Spanish. And so when I'm learning about World War II, sometimes I will just look up phrases and words and such in Polish. Not all the time, because it's probably not gonna pop up all that much for me, but I certainly would like to understand more about that whole era of time because World War II interests me a lot, especially around the Holocaust and that whole topic. It's a lot more interesting for me to learn about it in Polish. I do have um, certain things of that material in Spanish as well. I think it's important for me to learn those vocabulary words in Polish as it is interesting for me to learn about World War II, interesting for me to learn Polish, and also those two things just connect. So some topics you're going to speak about in one language, whereas another language, it may just not be a topic of interest for you to speak about. So different languages can have different topics of interest. So like with Japanese, for example, I would talk about food as a big one. I enjoy Japanese food a lot. Asian food in general is actually, um, you know, really interesting for me, really tasty. I just enjoy Japanese food, Asian food in general. So food is a huge one for me. And then I'd wanna learn the proper way to say things like sushi, bento. And a lot of these words are kind of, if you eat Japanese food, like you kind of know these words, but you may not know exactly what these words mean. And yeah, that's just like one example where like in Japanese, I would speak about food, whereas in Polish or in Spanish, I would still speak about food, but probably not to the extent I would like to in Japanese because the Japanese food to me is just like, I don't know, it's, it's a bigger part of the culture, I guess. In Japanese, you got a history, so th there's a whole bunch of history things that you could learn there. In Japanese, you also have culture, um, which culture really plays a big part in Japan in terms of politeness for example, and to be honest, there's a lot I could do with learning about Japanese culture, but I do know that being polite is like a, such a huge thing in Japan, uh, more so than what you'd speak about in a lot of European languages. And so, yeah, hopefully this has given you an idea of kind of like what you can do to break down topics of interest and then try and break down vocabulary interest for you. So we can ask ChatGPT or your favorite Skynet AI computer, whatever you wanna do, give me 10, vocabulary words or something like that um, in the topic of traveling in Polish and let's just see what it gives us so it gives us these words plus the which is which are better than what I could think of on the spot when recording this video to be honest with you for example to sightsee which I think is pronounced as zwiedzacz or something like that I've never seen this word before actually but that's quite a useful word if you're like Save your one and just learn Polish for like a couple weeks to learn when you travel and you're there for maybe five days or something. And you just want to say, yeah, I want to sightsee. You could say, which means I want to sightsee. ChatGPT AI in general can really help you to find out words. Give me 10 words uh, related to food in Japanese. And here we go again, we have sushi, ramen, vegetables, meat, fish, etc. And these are all things that are actually quite common in Japanese food culture actually as well. So that's a really good set of 10 words you can at least start yourself with. You can ask it for 20 words or 30 words if you want. You can press a little refresh button here which may give you some new words. You can also just ask it something like give me 10 uh, sentences uh, related to language learning in Polish this for example I'm learning Polish because I want to travel around Poland without communication issues that is essentially what I said at the beginning of this video as well so that's kind of probably a little bit formal 
uh, without communication issues. Although that's probably quite a good sentence for me to actually learn. So in this case, I'm just going to put it down. You can see there's also other sentences here as well. There's a lot for me to go through right here. Grammar can be challenging, but over time I'm starting to understand it. That's a pretty well worded sentence and, you know, hopefully the uh, the Polish is correct as well. You can also go to Google Translate and you can go Polish to English and you can just double check. Google Translate essentially says the same thing, although the translation is a little bit odd here. But if you don't really like using AI systems, which I would say is quite useful for language learning, you could also like, for example, watch videos on YouTube surrounding the topic that you're wanting to listen or watch. So if you want to learn about technology in Polish, you go on Easy Polish YouTube channel and you find it like a video that they've done surrounding technology and hopefully they've done a video on that and like it'll be a good video for you to do studying from. In a lot of cases, in almost every case, I can watch one of those easy language videos and find something of use in a, in a topic that I'm interested in. They've got a lot of topics in a lot of different languages. You could ask someone, if you know someone who speaks the language you're trying to learn, you can ask him like, hey, could you help me translate the sentence? Could you just double check the sentence? That's what you should do, in my opinion, if you're, especially if you're struggling with finding vocabulary. Look at the language itself, understand why it is you're learning it and what it is exactly you want to achieve in that language. Then break down things you want to talk about in like the more broad topic like areas and then look into those and see what is the vocabulary that you're going to want to learn in order to speak about this topic and once you've broken that down successfully you then want to try and put things into sentences use chat gpt to help you form sentences or come up with new sentences that you may not have thought of and yeah just from there like you can do as you wish you can just read them and just read them every day until you remember them you can import them into link if you have link and uh, you know, use it that way and read it within link. You can also ask ChatGPT to put your vocabulary in a sentence or in a, in a story, for example. So let me, for example, copy and paste this and see what ChatGPT does. Put these 10 Polish words in into a um, simple Polish story for me as I am a... Uh, Polish learner, Polish language learner, maybe I should put, and then paste those and see what it just gives us. And then it just gives us a little story, which again, if you have something like Link or whatever, like Link is just what I use, you can import this into Link and then you can actually use it as like a story. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got it right here and then you've not only got your 10 words here, you've got an entire story of words which, you know, already I can see like Zviedzic, which is uh, to sightsee. You can like look at the story and try and break down sentences depending on your level in the language. And obviously you could pick whatever 10 words you wanted to just chuck into a story. But essentially, you know, that's how you can build up on your vocabulary and things that you want to learn if you're stuck on trying to find a word or phrase or whatever that you would like to learn. So overall, I hope this video has helped you just understand a little bit more like the direction you could take if you're struggling with trying to think about what words to learn or what's important for you to learn in your target language. Over time, you'll start to recognize and be more comfortable with these uh, particular vocabulary words if you keep seeing them every single day. And before you know it, you'll start to just recognize and be able to pluck out of your mind uh, different words that you once thought were impossible to learn or remember. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Just let me know. I'll do my best to answer all questions that you ask in the comment section. With all out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one for another video. Until then, have a good one and peace out.